Okay, well, this is new, but here's what I'm gonna do for you today. All right, you see all that? This right here is pizza dough recipe. And come to realize that many people no longer bake from scratch, which is a shame, but I'm gonna walk you through how easy this is. The first step is to dissolve your yeast in warm water, and then you also have to stir in your sugar with that because that way the yeast has something to activate and to, and to feed off of because it needs the sugar to grow, which is why we get that rising action. You need the warm water to wake it up. My yeast has been in the refrigerator. I talked about yeast um, in our seventh grade science class earlier this year, and I had more kids than not never know what yeast was. So right now I'm just getting the water warm. You don't want boiling water because instead of activating the yeast, you can actually kill it. So just warm water, hot water, um, not so that it burns you, but a little warmer than baby bath water. Mm -hmm. No temperature from me for that one. So just nice hot water. Again, I'm taking it right from the tap. We do have filtered water too. So, all right. So you'll notice that recipe says a package of active dry yeast. Well, I don't have the package, I have this part. So hold on a second. There's the recipe again. All right. So one package of active dry yeast is about equivalent to two teaspoons, two and a quarter teaspoons. So two teaspoons with a little extra is good. Right in. Morning. Okay, so there was a little extra bit. Now you also need that teaspoon of sugar. I use the same teaspoon as I did for the yeast. I try to keep a clean kitchen as I cook. So we're just gonna put that in like that. Now, to activate the yeast and sugar, you put the warm water in. And that is a cup of warm water. Okay. And you will definitely get the smell of that yeast as soon as you add that water to it. I'm just gonna take a fork and mix it together. Just so everything's stirred up well, mixed together. You don't want any of the yeast staying in lumps. The next is a tablespoon of oil. I no longer use vegetable oil, so I have my light olive oil. It was open before I started. Here we go. All right. Tablespoon of olive oil. Ah, 
close up, sorry. Screw that all in. Now I did pre-measure the flour. It takes about two and a half cups. If it seems sticky, you can add a little bit more. Now, the other thing, you see I have an extra bowl over there. What I'm going to do is wipe that with a little bit of oil covering it so that the dough, as it rises, has room to rise and doesn't get stuck to the sides of the bowl. You're gonna want to let this rise anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Um, you'll be able to see it grow for sure. So that's not all of the flour. Still got all that left. Just trying to get the most of it mixed in with the liquid first. And I am using an all-purpose flour so that it already has all of the good stuff in it too. I'm gonna have to enlist someone to be a cameraman for me, I'm sure. So, now you also missed that I did wash my hands ahead of time because I am going to have to mix the rest of this together using my hands just to give it some squeezing. Um, when it does rise, you're gonna let it rise twice. Um, the first time it rises, you're gonna knock it down. You're just gonna kind of punch it down when it rises and then you can let it rise again for another 30 minutes. To not have anything stick to your hands, you put flour on your hands so that you have that together like that. And then you're just gonna take it. It should feel nice and warm because of the warm water. And you're gonna have just a ball of dough. I will say this is easier two-handed, being that I have only one hand available right now. I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. The dough right now is going to feel um, very dry. It does stick together. It's not um, too sticky, and that's what you want. You don't want it to be sticky and holding onto your hands. You're going to want to have it at the end of this process, you're gonna wanna have it so that it stretches out over your pizza pan. Whether it's metal or stone, it doesn't matter. You still want it to be flexible and pliable. But if you work pizza dough too much, it does become um, a little bit easier to rip, okay? So, just like that for your dough. And to my clean bowl. Paper towel. A little bit of that olive oil. Smear it around. You want to get the sides because as the dough rises, hopefully it will get nice and big. So now, just put that here and I cover mine with a kitchen towel. You can cover it with saran wrap kitchen towel works for me.
kind of old school on that. And then you just set it out of the way and let it rest. And then clean up. <laughs>